Hello guys, welcome to a guide on how to do resonators or height cubes or cubes or heights, however you want to call it, um, in capital MIs or infinity shards. Now the name depends, the names depends on um, whether you play the North American version of Aeon, whether you play the European version. This video is recorded on the European version, but it works the same for both versions. Now the basics of this are really simple, we are going to go over that once I actually start doing it, uh, but what's more important for you guys is uh, what a lot of guides won't tell you, what are the stats that you need. Most of the people say that entry stats for IS, uh, for Catalamize, are for magic classes 3k magic boost, 2k magic accuracy, and for physical classes 1k Attack 1k crit strike and 3k accuracy. Uh, now, as far as um, as far as resonators are concerned, this is absolutely incorrect. Um, to do resonators, you only need uh, like um, 2.5k magic boost and 1.8k magic accuracy as a magical class, and you need uh, well 1k crit is not really needed, but I do recommend it. It's not that hard to hit for physical DPS. Um, there is only one ranged physical DPS in the game anyway and that is Ranger so that's the only class that is physical ranged DPS that you can do resonators with. So for all other classes it's gonna be uh, 2.5k magic boost and 1.8k magical accuracy. Now you can easily reach these stats with any level 55 gear or whatever. Um, and um, for yeah, so and for physical classes for rangers, it is um, 2.5k accuracy without your aiming on, so 2.7k with aiming and 1k crit strike and as much attack as you can get. Um, it's not really uh, anything above 700, 750 ish should be fine. Your first priority after getting to 65 should be getting an ancient coin weapon anyway, which is what I'm using still now. And that is, as, as you can see, it's absolutely fine. So those are the stats. Now for the for the thing itself, once you enter Catalamize, you will notice that but on the left, on the left side of the entrance, there are pots and there are platforms in the air. And one of the there are two platforms, and then there is a platform with a boss on it, with a hero great sorcerer surrounded by two mobs. Uh, that is the platform over there. So what you want to do for doing resonators is stand on the very first platform as as you come into um, Catalamize or Infinity Shard, the very first platform to your left is the platform that you are going to be using for doing resonators. Um, once the shields go down on Hyperion you will get a you will get a message saying that Hyperion shields are down. Four of these it, it resonators that you can see me killing right now. Four of these will spawn. Now you, the Rezo person, you only kill two, usually. Sometimes some people kill three. Um, I've personally never done it that way. I always only kill two. Um, I mean, if you know how to kill three um, and if you can do it, go for it. But two is enough. Two is what everyone wants you to do. So what you will do is just kind of just stand around the whole run. Just stand on this platform um, and kill these three things over and over. Uh, make sure that you have um, go to your options. This is very important. This is very very important. So listen, go to your options and make sure that in the controls and time tab in your options you have your click to move disabled and you have your auto approach target disabled. This way you will not fall off the platform unless you double click Hyperion. That's the only case in which you will fall off the platform. If you double click on a Hyperion you are going to fall down. So do not do that. Set that up and then you are basically good to go. That's, that's it. That's all you're going to do for the entire run. How long it's going to take I can't tell you. That depends on your alliance DPS. But um, if you do not defeat Hyperion within 20 minutes, um, the, the instance fails automatically. And 
you have no you have no power over that. Now, why is resonator so important? Why every alliance needs a resonator? Every alliance needs a resonator because if the if the resonators are not destroyed in time, and now the time limit to destroy the resonators is until they use this increase attack skill on Hyperion two times. After they use the the increase attack skill two times, there is some short time period, a few seconds, and after that the resonator goes vulnerable. You cannot goes invulnerable. You cannot kill it anymore. You cannot destroy it. And Hyperion receives a buff. You can see now on Hyperion there are two buffs: increase attack. If I was to let one resonator slip, um, if I fell down, didn't make it back in time, etc., etc., uh, Hyperion would have three buffs, but we could still do the instance. But once he hits four buffs, the instance is over, and there is nothing you can do about that. So it is very, very, very crucial, even if you fall off the platform, if you manage to fall off, that you return back as soon as possible, or someone replaces you, and just keep killing the last resonator. Even if you let one slip, you can still kill one resonator um, and leave the other one be, and you can finish the run. Um, so that is why you need a resonator in um, Infinity Shard. And that is what a resonator person does, that is how you do it. Now, my personal tips for doing resonator. Um, if you are a magical class, uh, like a spirit master, don't forget to use your mm, use your spirit skill that increases your... Uh, do not have your spirit summoned. If you are a spirit master, you are doing resonators, you cannot have your spirit summoned. Um, and that is because it tends to glitch a lot, but... Uh, summon it every two minutes to use the skill that gives you 200 more magic boost and 200 more magical accuracy. That way you can do it with much lower stats. And at the same time when you have the spirit summoned, you can replenish your mana from it and then just send it away right right after that. Um, so that are the tips for spirit master. Um, for other magical classes in general, um, try to leave your big skills like gunner, your big cannon bursts, or on sorcerer, your nukes, try to leave that uh, for this tower because uh, the defensive tower. Because if the defensive tower, if you don't kill it fast enough, this siege cannon, it applies a debuff to you that greatly reduces your attack speed and it can also do some nasty damage to you. Um, so save the big nukes, etc., for, uh, for, for, the, for the siege cannon. Um, another tip that I would have. Um, is stop looking at your teammates. Do not worry about the ads. Um, do not worry about your teammates. Do not worry about the tank. That's their job. Your job here is just to rezzo. Um, the only so don't attack the ads ever at all, and don't attack Hyperion because if you do, I know it's tempting because sometimes you have a lot of time between the resonators. You can attack Hyperion no problem, uh, but do not do that because then Hyperion can target you and one shot you down. And that would not be great unless you have an item resurrection or a hand of resurrection on you cast by your cleric. Um, another tip that um, I would like to give is um, if if you see that the debilitate skill is going to proc on you, just use your evasion skill. Um, Rangers have it, gunners have it. Um, I think sorcerer has one too, but I'm not sure. So you can just use that, and also you can use a greater healing potion to dispel that effect from from the from the skill that the cannon casts on you. So if you have greater healing potions, I don't have any at the moment. You can use them to to um, get the get get the debuff of you basically. Um, another thing to watch out for uh, at the very end, it's it's good to gradually look at Hyperion's HP. You can see it when the resonators target Hyperion, you will see his HP. Because in the last portion, no one is going to take care of the ads. And so, uh, while your mates, while your teammates are burning down Hyperion, it is quite possible that the last wave of ads will aggro on you. And unless you want to lose your glory points, your honor points for the instance, which is 50 honor points, respectively, like glory points for every kill, you want to stay alive when Hyperion dies. Uh, you do not lose the loot if you die, you only lose your honor points.
but still you want to be alive so save your shields your heals self heals if you have any all, all the big stuff for the last for the last bit um and other than that i think there is nothing more to add that's basically all there is to it that's all there is to it and make sure also that you don't run out of mana so use your use your potions constantly use your um, mana treatment when you have time because you are going to need that mana um, the dps needs to be constant you need to um, you know kill the kill the kill the ites and the siege cannon constantly over and over and over until hyperion is killed or the time runs out so keep that in mind you can't afford to run out of mana Now, if you are a DPS that has like 25 meter range, which I do not because rangers have a bestial fury, which greatly increases our damage but decreases our range, basically if you can reach Hyperion from the platform without falling off, as I almost just fall, fell off, um, at the last burn phase after Dreadful Howl, when, um, the, when the debuff is gone and your teammates are burning through the last 5 person on Hyperion, you can join in and help them finish off Hyperion. Like for example, if you are a sword, go ahead, unload that stone strike, or your flame spray, your either flame, everything onto that thing. Um, because once it dies, you do not need to care about the resonators anymore. So in the end, at the end, you, you can just like, you know, add that little bit of DPS on top and just burn through it before the resonators get a chance to buff it twice. Um, but that is up to you. Um, and basically that's it so everything I've said in this video are tips to make it easier um, IS is not a difficult instance not by far it's been a long time since it has been released and still I see that many people um, do not know how to rezzo or are afraid to rezzo now the first time I did rezzo it was actually a bit um, a bit stupid on my part because what I did when I was first, first doing rezzo in 4.0 it was when IS first came out, um, someone was looking on LFG for Rezo, and I applied, and I've never done Rezo before. Um, and I applied, and they said, they ask, are you experienced? I say, of course I am. And I went to YouTube, uh, as you are watching this video now, I went to YouTube, and I watched one video, and it was like a two minute video explaining how to do resonators in, in short, and I did it. And I've been doing it ever since. We did not fail. I made it. And uh, I've been doing it like that ever since. But don't... I mean, yeah, you can do it like that. But you should not lie. Just say, like, you know, I know what to do. But I've never done it. And and you're, and you're you should be fine. Like, Or just say that I want to try it out. And that's all. That's all, and we, now we have successfully completed um, Infinity Shard as a Resonator. I'll also show you what I get from the chests, hopefully something useful. Um, this is two runs every week, or three runs every week on North America if you have the, if you have the Instance Boost Pack. Um, and you can get Mythical Armor, Mythical Accessories, Mythical Weapons, Eternal Armor, Eternal Accessories, Eternal Weapons. Hopefully I get something good. Nope, I already have that. And I didn't have that. So yes, I got at least something. As you can see, you can get pretty nice mythic items. And also some enchantment stones and designs. And that's it. That's how you do Rezo. Thank you for watching. Um, see you in the next video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to contact me via the comments or a personal message. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.